last, uh, well, episode four was a bit of a downer. Yeah. And episode five was also a, maybe a bit of a downer because Ed's arm got destroyed. And then the and then suit of armor got Al, ripped off. Yeah, Al got basically decimated and just like ripped into little pieces on one side of his body. And Ugh. Scar got away. And Scar got away, yes. But we did find out the true reason behind him killing all the state alchemists. And it's because of the the fact that he's an Ishvalan, which means that he wants revenge for what right. happened to his country. But he shouldn't be taking it out on, on the all Elrics. of the state. No, like take it. I would understand taking it out on the ones who have a war record in Ishval and committed right. atrocities. But the but, Elric brothers didn't. Yeah. They weren't even really alive, really, were they? Or do we get to find that out? You'll find out. There's oh. there's stuff about this. It's just it. I don't you'll know, see. Ishval, have we Ishval? Did we hear that already once in the series before? Yes, I thought so. Was it the dude from the first episode? Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. And also, so King... now we also know why he was trying to basically blow up the place that Fur Bradley was in. Also, we <clears throat> we found out that Fur Bradley was the one who ordered the state alchemist to go in and basically mm. commit genocide against the Ishvalans. So which... now we know why people hate him, and it seems justifiably so. <clears throat> yes. So, Does it make, well, Go ahead. would, our lust and envy is fallen as well? You'll see, you'll see. Because I mean, their eyes are red. Well, you'll find out what, what their thing is. Envy, um, you know, is able to change shapes. Mm-hmm. And gluttony is able to, well, gluttony doesn't have red eyes. Right, but the other two do. That's why I was wondering. Well, you'll find out what their deal is soon enough. But, okay. But I mean, I wasn't trying this. I no, 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 no. And it's you. and it's okay for you to be curious about it because you know there's a lot of questions. Yeah. And not a lot of answers yet. But we'll get there. And uh, it's better? so hard not to watch this show. I know <laughs> it's a great show, it. isn't it? It's a great. I'm really show. fighting myself. Please I've, do. I've contemplated just not even turning on the TV because that's all I think about when I turn on the TV, so. It's finding a different show to watch in the meantime. Yeah. yeah. Alright, here we go. So watch My Hero Academia. Right, oh, it's Academia. worthy. It's worth it. That's <clears throat> on Country Roll too, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's actually also on Hulu as well. The Major's here to help. Children could be so stubborn. Hey, shut up! I'm no child! Yes, you are. Anyway, are you sure Al made it on board? <laughs> oh, come on. No. He has to salute with his other arm because <laughs> his, his right one's gone. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm laughing at his disability. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I know. I'm an asshole. What? I was just like, I, I was pointing out the fact that he had to salute with his left hand because his right hand was gone. Oh. And I was like, ha ha, I'm laughing at his disability. Ha ha, yeah, I'm an asshole. Because <laughs> I know people are going to be saying that in the comments section. Go ahead. The scenery in this show is really cool. Mm-hmm. It's me, Alex Louise Armstrong from Central. Oh, shit. Uh oh. Clearly, he doesn't want to be found. The art of portraiture has been passed down to the Armstrong family for He's generations. just holding <laughs> Al in his, on his shoulder. Yeah, and the arm. <laughs> Poor Al. That man looks like Dr. Morrow to me. Um, hello. Uh, Excuse right, you. tell me what you two are doing here. Have you come to take me back? I'll ask you one more time. Please calm down. Now, Fonz! <laughs> I'm fine. Poor Al. Used him as a, used him as a friggin' like, uh, as a friggin' like, uh, what would you call it? I, I guess like a, just like a rock. Just like. Or like a cannonball or something. Yeah, just like, like, please calm down. (laughs) So I came here to be a doctor to save lives instead of taking them. Respectable. Doctor, what exactly was it you were ordered to do research on? The philosophers. The top secret materials I took were my research documents. And the stone itself. There it is. How can that be the stone? It's just like the stone that false priest had in Lior. It was incomplete, but it still amplified his powers considerably. I need access to your research materials. No. Major, who exactly is this boy? If you chase the stone, you will go through hell. I've already been through hell! Please, 
You think you know, Please but... Just leave. Mm. Mm. See, I can understand, to a certain degree, Ed's impatience, because, you know, yeah. he wants to get his brother's body back. But also, you have to look at Marco's, uh, Marco's perspective as well. I mean, he probably knows something about the making of the Philosopher's Stone that is just beyond anything that anyone should ever do. Right. And, yeah, I mean, you can tell it's tormenting him. Yeah. We don't want it so badly that we'd be willing to deprive this town of their only doctor to get it. We'd mm. gain plenty just by finding out that the Philosopher's Stone can be made. I met a simple small town doctor today. I can't see any real reason to report that. Well done. Wait. Armstrong's a respectable guy and... He changed his mind. Dr. Marco? So, yeah. A lot of people would probably disagree with me on something, but this is the first episode of the show so far where I'm starting to finally feel a little immersed in this world. Um, there's just been this weird disconnect for me every time I've tried to get into it so far where every episode just felt so, I guess, episodic. Like, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't feel the world being built. No, you. Much. It's sort of. Um, it's even sort though they did world building, like they established things were things, but like I don't know, I just didn't feel super invested until this episode, and now I'm just kind of like, now I'm just suddenly my interest is just like quadrupled for some reason. I can't even and, say why. Well, it's because we're expanding out and we're actually following them on their journey now. We aren't being Maybe told that's something it. Maybe it's the hand. fact that they're not in one place. Like, we're following a journey this episode. And also, not only that, but we're seeing other places outside of Central, outside mm -hmm. of Risenbull, you know, their hometown. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're seeing how alchemy and these people are affecting people's everyday lives. Yeah, that could be it. There's, there's, a, lot that, there's a lot of depth with this show. I, that's why I love it so much. The... The what? scenery makes uh, makes me uh, think of Ghibli. Studios. Yes, sweeping uh, sweeping visuals like that, uh, very Ghibli inspired, and also uh, also a lot of the technology and the world that this is set in is based on like Central Europe. Hmm. Uh, it's based on you know like um, like uh, early industri It's like industrial revolution Europe, like, yeah. and it's uh, it. I'll say this. The design cues that the original author took from from the real world are just some of them are evident. You know, trains, steam engines, you know, steam technology, stuff like that, electricity, mm -hmm. you know, there's basic stuff like that, but then there's the intervention of alchemy, which basically is a wild card in this and that Also when they talk about the philosopher's stone, I think of Harry Potter. <laughs> Yes, yeah. sort of. Um, I also like Trails of Clues. And so far it's felt more like they've been kind of flying by the seat of their pants up until this episode. And they just got a lead this episode yeah. on the mystery, the overarching mystery. And they got a clue to follow. National, National Central, Central Library, Library First Branch. Branch. So like Fire Force, for example, is one that comes to mind of the shows that I, uh, a modern show I really love because they were dropping trills of clues from the start and they never stop. Yes. And there's always mysteries being solved and mysteries being introduced in it. And that's why yes. Fire Force just like has me riveted. Like <laughs> basically, you know. Same, dude. Same. <clears throat> oh no. Rest in peace, doctor. I've been looking for you, Marco. <clears throat> Lust. <laughs> I'm oh, look at the dog. Yeah, you gotta He's prostate. got a new I know arm. I haven't seen you yeah. for a while. I'm supposed to say how big you've grown lately, Ed. But why would I say something so clearly untrue? I'm still taller than you, you mini hag. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> That's basically the same, just in smaller pieces. <laughs> Don't tell you me. deserve it. You a little smashed up too, Al? <laughs> The body. Of course he doesn't have his shirt on. Of course not. He's he <laughs> like you expect. If I looked like that, I wouldn't wear a shirt ninety yeah, percent of the same, time either. Same. I wouldn't either. If I looked, if I had like half the body that man had, I would I would walk around shirtless basically all the time. But don't worry, they're all right. The Elric brothers are strong boys. Strong, huh? Mm -hmm. Yes. Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Pat. They burned down their own house. My guess is they did it because with no house to come home to, 
There could be no turning back. No choice but to move forward. Come, Edward! Allow me to help you! This company can break! Oh, God! No! <laughs> I was going to say, as soon as, as, soon as like, he embraces Edward, he's just like, he's like, did you pre-baby oil yourself? Oh, Jesus Christ! At least he's not quite as bad as putting pretty prisoner with stuff Thank like that. Thank God. Yeah. Pretty pretty prisoner is just fucking creepy. There's a reason why he's in prison. Mm-hmm. Whereas, whereas Armstrong... There's a heavily implied reason why he's in prison. Anyway. Yes, very, very heavily implied. <laughs> and then the other thing, Alec, like, like Armstrong is not a creep. He's just... Not good at giving people personal space. Yeah, yeah, he's just like, you know, not the I, best. I know at, people like that. Not the best at ensuring that everyone is comfortable, you know? <laughs> yes. He believes that, you know, personal interaction and, like, hugging is like, he's a hugger, basically. Yeah. Look at you working hard so early in the morning. Been up all night. Damn. Well, that's Winry for you. Again, this is why everyone says Winry is one of the best anime girls, best anime, like, like characters ever because of just how dedicated she is to her craft. It's kind of violent. Though. As you would be if someone fucked up your masterpiece. <laughs> She's going to hit you. Get out. <laughs> they said it would take I'd be kind of right? the process no, myself. Three days. Yeah, well, I the know, machining and all that, like machining stuff does take time, especially old, in old school techniques like that. You know, the raw materials, the layering, the shingling, and then also, you know, just making sure everything fits. Precision is the fabrication. Key. Oh, fabricate, yeah, fabrication. I'm interested in processes, but I also understand that some people psychologically can't work as well if they're being watched. So Yes. Well, especially if you have someone leering over you as much as Ed was. Yeah. Ed was literally just like, huh? huh? That, that'll huh? bother huh? Any, huh? that'll huh? bother huh? anyone. It's like, yeah. It'd be like if you want to watch, over fucking you. sit down in the corner and shut the fuck up. It'd be like me leering <laughs> over your shoulder whenever you're editing. I'll just be like, hmm, what you doing? How's it going? What's going on? What's the, how you doing here? Yeah, there's a reason why I don't do that. Because people sometimes need space. Yeah. Here you go. Mm. You're good as new. I'm so grateful to you for always welcoming us like we're really family. He won't ever say it, but I know Brother feels the same way. He doesn't have to say it. Thank you. Aww. <laughs> Bro, come on. Come back soon, okay? Aw, oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, also, they said that there are potentially, uh, like, after credit scenes, so... Uh-oh. Huh? Whoopsie. <laughs> Winry. Uh oh. <laughs> Damn it. I hope that wasn't super important. Mm, not gonna say anything. <clears throat> I guess that just goes to show you like the connection they have with Winry and uh, you know like and even yeah Granny and also what they did to ensure that they would just not be going back to Rizumbul. I mean, yeah. Because that's the thing. I mean, you know, it. Given the situation that they were in, I cannot, I don't know if I 100% understand why they would burn down their own home. Because, yeah, I, the whole thing with that is just, that's a truly, if that happens, like, just on accident, like, that's a truly tragic thing that just completely wipes out a, a huge sect of your life. Huge section of just, like, everything. And for them to do that, that's just... I, and also, you know, not only that, but I think I kind of longer. get it after what they witnessed there and went through there as well. well. Yeah, I mean, the alchemy they performed in the basement trying mm-hmm. to bring their mom back. And they probably just. It almost might have been relieving to make sure that the place that that happened didn't exist anymore. Probably. Although, damn, that's a hell of a thing. It's mm-hmm. a hell of a thing to do. So, Plus, like they said, like it was to ensure that there was no turning back. Yeah, I I can say this, you know that, yeah they their decisions were their decision. Don't know if I hundred percent support it, but hey, their decision. But hey, they still got Winry and Granny there, you know Granny Panaco. And by the way, you know that 
People had it confused in the first episode. They thought that I said that Panaco was their grandmother. I didn't say that. I said that they were, it was Winry's grandmother, and basically she was like a sort of surrogate grandmother mm-hmm. to the boys. Yeah. But I guess the way that maybe I worded it or said something like that, maybe they got it confused. I don't know. But now they're going to Central, and hopefully they can start the trail on figuring out how to obtain the Philosopher's Stone. And maybe Winry might have to call him up and be like, hey. I forgot the screw. No, she'd never, she's too prideful. She'd probably just be like, yeah, I just came by to run a little bit of maintenance and, uh, you know, uh, (laughs) just spur the moment. You you came all the way to Central to look at my arm right after you just got done making it. I have no clue if it was this or the original series, but I did catch a scene where she showed up on them at one point. Yes. Um, whenever it was on Adult Swim. <laughs> I didn't watch very much. I just remember she showed up and she's like, let me see your arm, you know, or whatever. And I just kind of turned it off because I was like, I don't really know what's going on in this. So. Yeah. There's there's a lot of instances with Winry. Uh, Winry. Winry is in this a fair amount, although not as not as much as I'd like her to be. I mean, I think she's an awesome character. Yeah. And I think that she's pretty badass in her own right. But yeah, there's several episodes, uh there's several episodes where she's she's a very central character in the story. And especially now knowing uh her parents died during the Ishvalan Civil War. Mm-hmm. That's another thing too. And you'll find out exactly what the deal is with that and you know her parents and I hope that they also um, show more about the the brother's dad. Oh yeah, you'll you'll learn about him because uh, that's that's the thing with uh, the mystery. Like, there's several mysteries that are hiding in the background that are mentioned, but are brought more to the foreground as the show goes on. Yeah, and I was kind of getting the vibe this episode, especially when Granny said that he was one of her old drinking buddies. That there's a possibility that he may not have purposefully abandon his family something else may have happened maybe Mm -hmm. and you'll figure out you'll figure out what the deal is with him uh when he shows up also will we get to see what happened to the doctor i'm eventually at some point they'll find out eventually uh, it's the we're told what happened to him so shows like this like normally that would be considered a plot hole if we were just left to guess from this point on what happened with the doctor like shows like anime and such usually goes back and touches on things like that in some way yeah there's actually a, another character whom during this we uh you know there's yeah there's a lot of build up with them and it's and it's just like damn like this is like this is really serious and all that and by the time it, you know by the time the episode's over you understand why we focus so much on that character and it's like they have something very big to do with a character or a scenario that has already happened and we didn't have like the background info on you'll you'll see you'll you'll see it's the show's the show's amazing i'm also thinking like if we record this at an accelerated rate uh you know i'm not sure how quinn would feel about it but i might pay quinn to do two episodes a week mm mm-hmm. mhm so, because, you know, this show is a very long one. And if we did two episodes a week, we would still have more than enough to fill out the majority of the year. Because it, it's like 60 episodes, I think. Holy shit. I know. And That's actually not that bad for anime. For, well, compared to, like, compared Bleach to... and Naruto and and uh, One Piece, but compared to, like, Spy X Family, like, Spy X Family double. just started airing. Yeah, true. I'm saying, like, My Hero Academia has got more than 60 episodes. Oh, yeah, it's got twice as much, but that's Demon 60 Slayer is probably worth. getting close to that if they haven't already hit 60. Mm, Demon Slayer, they're at, if you include... I know Fire Force is probably going to go well over 60 eventually if it hasn't already. Yeah, it will, no like, doubt. Uh, 60 is not that bad for an entire run. I've done... I've done sixty episode shows before. Like they're oh, I have too. Like other shows, <clears throat> like long for me is when you go into the hundreds or worse. So Nick, <laughs> that's the thing. You and I are as as seasoned anime watchers. We know this. I'm talking I'm about not. Kate. I'm talking about Kate here. True. 
And and who's to say that we'll get in a good groove of watching this? And that, we'll... that's why I recommended My Hero Academia to you um, because there's enough of it out right now that if you end up wanting to watch more and binge it, kind of in between like us watching this, mm-hmm. you won't run out of it really fast. You'll so, have you'll have a good amount of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so. it's definitely worth catching all the way up on because it has gotten insanely good in the recent episodes. Oh yeah, and also uh, the dub is really good. The dub of My Hero Academia is really, really good. It's on par with this, I think. The dub and the sub are both good, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. So but the, her, the dub is to... cool, though, because Armstrong voices one of the main characters. The same voice actor that voice acts Armstrong... And this dub voices one of the main characters of My Hero Academia. So and you'll, he, you'll recognize him almost immediately. Oh, also, yeah. Fanboy Expo is going to be in Knoxville uh, in July. Is he going to be there? Yep. Uh, hmm. Along with a slew of other people, including my old friend Craig Parker from uh, Lord of the Rings. Huh. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> Here, let, I'll just show you the... Let's see. Fanboy... Expo Knoxville. There we go. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, of course, Kev Smith. He always shows up to this one. Uh, let's see. Where's our guest? Be our guest. Be our guest. So, yeah. Jason Muse. Oh, uh, yeah. Gimli. Gimli and uh, Sala. Uh, <laughs> Eowyn from Lord of the Rings. Uh, Craig Parker. Yeah. Also from Lord of the Rings. And uh, yeah, he played Haldir, and he was also in Spartacus. Uh, Sala, who played <laughs> who uh, played Sauron. What? Chris Lambert, a.k.a. the fucking Highlander, <laughs> is going to be there. Mike Rosenbaum. Uh, John Glover. Uh, let's see. Sam Witwer. John... He has not aged a fucking day. It's been 20 years since he was on Doctor Who. What the hell? Oh yeah, Kerr Smith from Final Destination. Oh yeah, Holly from uh, from Charmed. Charmed. She's yeah. Piper, and of course the voice actress for Velma. Oh, that's cool. Also, there he is, Chris Sabat, super fucking cool. And then uh, yeah, Sean Schimmel who plays uh, who plays Goku, Tony Anselmo, Donald Duck, you know <laughs> the Donald <laughs> Duck, and Kurt fucking Angle. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, they get and more to come. <laughs> like more to be announced cuz again, it's in July and they've already mm. confirmed this many guests. So yeah, that's cool. I either got to draw this reaction to a close or take an early leave. Okay, so <clears throat> everybody, thank you very much for tuning in and I guess until next time, if you want to see more Full Metal Alchemist, y'all know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, leave a like, and until next time, I'm Nate. I'm Kate. I'm Nick. Take care everybody. Bye-bye. See ya.